In our past issues, we have repeatedly mentioned other species of people who lived on Earth at different times. Some of them are our distant ancestors. Others turned out to be dead-end branches of evolution. All of them except our species are currently extinct. But sometimes the evolution of humanity took rather bizarre forms. And today, we will tell you in more detail about the most unusual types of prehistoric people. Subscribe to the Age of Dinosaurs channel. This will allow you to be the first one to know about the release of new videos dedicated to the evolution of life on the planet. And with the help of likes and comments from the viewers, these videos can be watched by the maximum number of science lovers. Also, the activity from our viewers will allow the channel creators to assess the interest of the audience. Homo habilis Until recently, Homo habilis or Homo habilis was considered the first hominid who could make a primitive tool. Also, most likely, it was the habilis who became the first people to switch to omnivory. Our earlier ancestors preferred a vegetarian diet. Homo habilis was first described in 1964. He lived in Kenya, South Africa, and Tanzania from 2.3 to 1.5 million years ago. In a number of external characteristics, habilis was a very similar to gray seal, that is, less massive australopithecines. But their structure also contains features characteristics of later hominids. Their skull had a more rounded vault and a larger brain cavity than all known Australopithecus species. Their brain volume is estimated at approximately 650 grams. They also lack the neutral crests found in Australopithecines. The face of the Homo habilis is no longer so flattened. The nasal cavity is pushed forward and the cheekbones, on the contrary, are moved back. The jaws are smaller than those of the Australopithecines. Homo habilis's teeth are smaller than those of its ancestors, but larger than those of its descendants. This clearly illustrates the tendency towards a gradual decrease in their size during the evolution of hominids. With more graceful body sizes, the proportions of the habilis limbs were the same as those of the Australopithecus. Their teeth were almost flat, without pronounced arches. The toes were short, and the thumbs were completely aligned with the rest. The height of a skilled man was no more than 120 centimeters. He weighed around 40 to 50 kilograms. It is from the habilis that the beginning of the rapid growth in the size of the brain of our ancestors can be traced. They were the first to use stone tools, which is how they got their name. Homo habilis is the creator of the early pebble culture. It is also known as Olduvai or Aldewan culture. The first discoveries of the remains of this primitive man were made in 1960 in the town of Olduvai in Tanzania. The habilis made simple stone knives. Perhaps they used fire and knew how to make primitive clothing. These ancient people ate mainly nuts, other fruits and roots. Their diets also included small animals. Rudolph Man at approximately the same time as Homo habilis, another species of prehistoric people lived in East Africa. His remains were found in Kenya, Tanzania, and Ethiopia. Their age ranges from 1.9 to 2.4 million years. Scientists have not yet determined the degree of its relationship to modern people, but this could either be our distant ancestor or a side branch of the evolution of the genus Homo. The first discovery of this extinct species was found in the vicinity of Lake Rudolph in Kenya. It consisted of a single incomplete skull. It was described by the Soviet anthropologist Valery Pavlovich Alkasiev in 1968. He also proposed the first name, Pithecanthropus rufaldensis. Later studies still made it possible to classify these creatures as belonging to the genus Homo. This is how the current name was assigned to it. Outwardly, Homo Rudolph was not very different from Homo habilis. These were ape-like creatures with flattened faces, sloping foreheads, and large jaws. The back of their heads were massive and protruded backwards. 
According to recent estimates, the brain volume of these ancient people was up to 700 cubic centimeters. This is significantly more than that of the Australopithecines that preceded it. Their height could exceed 180 centimeters. These were upright creatures that lived in savannas, semi-deserts, and along the banks of reservoirs. One can only guess about the lifestyle of Rudolph Mann. At the moment, scientists do not have many fossil remains at their disposal, but it's believed that they live by hunting and gathering. It is unlikely that they could make any serious tools or weapons. Most likely, Rudolph Mann improvised objects like stones and sticks for his needs. Homo naledi. In 2013, the scientific community was stirred by a truly unique discovery. Two cavers managed to penetrate the remote Dinaledi Grotto of Rising Star Cave, located near Johansonsburg. On the floor of the cave, measuring 1 to 9 meters, almost undisturbed by time, lay the remains of 15 individuals of a previously unknown species of primitive people. After studying the finds of the professional anthropologist, the species was given the name Dinaledi Man, or Homo naledi. Among the skeletons found were the remains of both adults and teenagers, as well as children. Due to the distance of the chamber from the entrance to the cave, and the difficulty of entering it, no one was able to find this burial earlier. It is believed that the path to this remote grotto was just as difficult during the life of Homo naledi. Therefore, some researchers suggested that they drag their dead fellow tribesmen there. This behavior may indicate the presence of simple funeral rites. Previously, it was believed that this was characteristic of the culture of later people. Also, some scientists have suggested that the dark marks on the ceiling of the cave are the remains of soot from torches. That is, the inhabitants of the cave could light their way to a remote part. And next to one of the skeletons was a piece of stone that was discovered, which had many traces of processing. But scientists don't yet have an exact answer to these mysteries. Dark spots on the walls, depressions in the floor of the cave, and a single object that looks like a tool may be of natural origin. Heidelberg Man Oddly enough, this very interesting human species, from an evolutionary point of view, was not of much interest to scientists for a long time. The first discoveries related to Heidelberg Man occurred in the mid-19th century. At that time, quite a lot was already known about both Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons. But scientists have not yet thought much about the intermediate link between primitive erecti and fairly developed later sapiens. Meanwhile, the Heidelbergensis, which lived in Africa, Europe, and Asia around 800 to 130,000 years ago, had many interesting traits and skills. In terms of brain size, they are already very close to modern humans, and they were the first to begin building some semblance of full-fledged dwellings and produced fairly high-quality and functional tools. But their main achievement was the taming of fire. If at the sites of primitive people 400,000 years old, there were no traces of fires. Already 350,000 years ago, they were present in many caves and open areas. All these achievements allowed humanity to begin settling in areas with temperate climate. It is believed that the part of the Heidelberg people who moved to Europe became the ancestors of the Neanderthals. This happened around 300,000 years ago. There is also an opinion that our immediate ancestors descended from those who remained in Africa approximately 100 to 200,000 years ago. But it is possible that the branches of development of Homo sapiens and Homo heidelberg diverged even earlier. Populations that found themselves on different continents were isolated from each other for a long time. This is what explains such significant differences in the structure of their descendants. Externally, Heidelbergensis or Pre-Paleoanthropus were in many ways similar to Neanderthals. More precisely, these paleoanthropes retained the features of their ancestors. They had skulls with thick walls, pronounced brow ridges, and massive sloping chins with low foreheads. But by that time, the dental arch had already acquired its modern shape. 
The average height of man was even greater than that of the Neanderthals. He was approximately 165 to 175 centimeters. Women were slightly shorter. There is evidence that representatives of the African branch even grew up to two meters. They lived in small family groups of several dozen individuals. They obtained food through gathering and hunting. Most likely, several clans periodically organized driven hunts for horses, elephants, bison, and other large ungulates. In their way of life, they were not much different from all other tribes of hunter-gatherers, including modern primitive peoples. In addition to the presence of man-made dwellings and skills in handling fire, Heidelberg man was also characterized by other qualities. These are archaeological findings that support care for the weaker and infirm members of family groups. Also, the structure of their brain suggests the possible presence of primitive speech. There are also signs of primitive funeral rites. Found tools up to 500,000 years old are made not only functionally, but also beautifully in their own way. Among the finds are ochre and other simple dyes. All this means that these ancient people were sufficiently socialized and had an understanding of art. Javantrop These ancient people from the island of Java are called Nangdong, or Soloi people. The first discoveries of their fossilized remains were made near the village of Nangdong, on the banks of Solo River. Here, in the early 30s of the last century, the remains of 12 individuals of different ages were discovered. Eight adults of different sexes, one male child, and three skeletons of unknown age and gender. There is no exact estimate of the age of these remains yet. Different research methods give a range from 143 to 546,000 years old. The structure of the Javanthropus skull is close to the skulls of Pithecanthropus and Sinanthropus. They have an oval shape with a sloping forehead and a protruding occipital part. The average brain volume of adults is 1,100 cubic centimeters. Scientists were able to accurately estimate the height of only one female, and it was equal to 158 centimeters. She weighed around 51 kilograms. The males were obviously a little larger. Presumably, their habitat was open forest spaces. They lived next to animals such as elephants, tapirs, tigers, and river buffaloes. There are finds in the form of simple tool and wooden flakes. This speaks of the possibility of creating primitive tools. Like many other ancient people, Javanthrops were hunter-gatherers. There were also suggestions about the prevalence of cannibalism among them. The group discovered on the banks of the Solo River most likely died during a volcanic eruption. As a species, they began to disappear approximately 125,000 years ago due to the spread of tropical forests. Modern science suggests that Javanthrops could not have been the ancestors of local inhabitants. At the moment, they are considered a dead-end branch of evolution. This first settlement of people in this region occurred 55 to 40,000 years ago. Man of Flores this species was discovered relatively recently and still hides quite a lot of mysteries. The fact is that in 2003, the fossilized remains of several unusual people were discovered in one of the caves of the island of Flores in Indonesia. Their average height was around one meter. For this, they received the unofficial nickname Hobbits. The first analysis showed that their age ranged around 12 to 74,000 years. That is, scientists have suggested that hobbits were the last neighbors of our species. But later studies showed that the Floresian man became extinct no earlier than 60,000 years ago. Also, tools were discovered next to human bones, the age of which estimated to a range of 50 to 190,000 years. Despite having a brain of about 400 cubic centimeters, these primitive people could be quite developed and intelligent. The body structure of the hobbits was quite bizarre. They had short legs and their hands and wrists were a rather primitive structure. At the same time, the thumbs were designed almost like those of modern people. The skull of the Flores man was low and flattened with a prominent facial part 
and pronounced brow ridges. It was an isolated island population. Hobbits coexisted with Komodo dragons, large carnivorous birds, and other predators, many of which were larger than them. Therefore, the main food of the Flores people was various plants. They could also hunt small animals and birds. And at the same time, they used primitive tools and knew about fire. The biggest mystery for scientists is the origin of the hobbits from Flores. According to one version, they are descendants from an Asian branch of Homo erectus. According to another, hobbits descended directly from African habilis. While some scientists express the opinion that the inhabitants of Flores are the descendants of the first representatives of Sapiens, who began expanding into the Pacific Islands earlier than the rest of their fellow tribesmen. Dwarfism is a common trait in a wide variety of isolated populations. The main version of scientists is as follows. Whoever the ancestors of these halflings were, they decreased in size after arriving on the island. But this version does not fit the find made in 2017. The remains of an even smaller humanoid creature were also discovered there. By all indications, it lived here before all the hobbits discovered before. Their age is approximately 700,000 years. This means that the ancestors of Flores Man came to the island straight from Africa. It was simply unrealistic to overcome such a distance by sea at that time. The only plausible explanation is the ancestors of the hobbits were brought by some kind of natural disaster like a giant tsunami. But this version is currently not confirmed by anything. Maybe later remains of an intermediate species between Homo flores and Homo habilis will be discovered. Then, scientists will have more harmonious versions of the origin of this species. Denisovans Denisov Cave in Altai has a very convenient location and configuration. It's not surprising for thousands of years, it served as a haven for a wide variety of ancient people. During excavations that began in 1977, the remains of both our ancestors and Neanderthals were discovered in different time layers. By that time, science was actively using technologies for obtaining DNA from fossils. The genetic codes of Neanderthals and ancient sapiens have already been obtained and deciphered. But it turned out that the DNA of the owners of one tooth and a phalanx of a finger from the Denisov cave belonged to a completely new species. Also attributed to him were two more teeth discovered back in 1984. Based on such a small number of finds, it was difficult to judge the appearance and lifestyle of Denisov man, but it's safe to say that they were dark-skinned, black-haired, and brown-eyed. But now it is no longer a secret that Cro-Magnons, Neanderthals, and Denisovans could have had common offspring. The genes of the modern population of the Earth contain traces of the DNA from all three species, but the descendants of Sapiens and Neanderthal are mainly found in Europe and the Middle East, and traces of Denisovan DNA were found in the inhabitants of the South Pacific region, right up to Australia. There's also evidence that Denisovan man could interbreed with a certain fourth species of people that are still unknown to science. It is believed that the ancestors of the Denisovans came out of Africa separately from the ancestors of modern sapiens and settled Asia and the Pacific Islands. Having reached the territory of modern Indonesia, they could move north along the Yangtze River. This is how they ended up in the vicinity of that very cave. This is the only human species to date that has been described solely by DNA analysis. Therefore, Many scientists are still cautious about identifying Denisovans as a separate species of people, as they have not even been given an official Latin name yet. Thank you for watching this video to the end. If you're interested in the history of the evolution of various species inhabiting the Earth, we recommend that you pay attention to our previous issues. We also talk about environmental and human problems.